At this wor point, the, the word average has showed up in two places in this, in this course. One is the average rate of change, which is basically how we started the course, and we knew that that was the slope of the secant line to a, a particular graph, and we used it to eventually find the slope of the tangent line to find the instantaneous rate of change. Now we've just defined the average value of a function, and so I, the question to ask is how they're related, and the way in which they're related is really the essence of the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, which I'll in in a, the next video probably I'm just going to actually use these two ideas to, to prove one part of the fundamental theorem. But let's look at an example for now to see how they're how these two guys are related in a particular context. So here we've got three functions, a position function, its velocity function, and an acceleration function. They're all um, representing some kind of moving object. Time's measured in seconds, and the distance is measured in meters. So let's say we're asked for the average velocity on the interval 2 to 5. Well, you'd probably, if you were at the... Um, if you were doing this problem at the beginning of the course, you would use the position function, and you would say, "Well, the average velocity is just the average rate of uh, the average rate of change of position." So that's just going to be s of five minus s of two divided by five minus two. And again, your units can tell you that this is indeed a velocity because the top subtraction, the units are meters, and the bottom subtracti subtraction gives you uh, seconds, right? And so s of 5 turns out to be 80. If you plug 5 into that cubic function there, you get 80, minus s of 2, which is 2, divided by 3. So that's 78 divided by 3, which turns out to be 26 meters per second. So there's one way to calculate the average velocity. However, we can now calculate it in a different way. We can calculate it in a different way because we know that the average velocity is now is also the average value of the velocity function. So you could also view it in terms of the integral. The average velocity is just the average value of the velocity function. So that's going to be 1 over 5 minus 2, the integral 2 to 5, of our velocity function, which is 3t squared minus 4t plus 1. So again, that's our velocity function. And so what you get is, so this is where I will take out our calculator to get that integral. So plug in 3x squared minus 4x plus 1, and I'm going to use the the function on the quit screen to do this. So go to math, down to fn int. I'm going to use, I'm not going to retype that function in, I'm going to go to my um, my variables button, go over to y vars, y1, so I'm, I'm going to integrate the function in y1, which is this velocity function. I'm going to integrate it with respect to x, so I put an x there, on the intervals 2 uh, to 5. So when you do that, you get 78. And 1 over 5 minus 2 is a third, so it's a third times 78, which of course is 26 meters per second. So now we see that the average velocity can be viewed as a subtraction, or as the slope, of a secant line, in other words, the uh, average rate of change of position, or you can view it as an integral in which you're summing up, um, you're summing up small changes in distance, uh, small changes in time times small changes in velocity, and that's going to give you uh, the average velocity as well if you divide by the time interval. So two ways of viewing the same thing or calculating the same thing. Average velocity, uh, average acceleration is similar. I could take, uh, I could find the average acceleration by viewing that as a change in velocity over change in time. 
and again the units here would be meters per second per second so that's going to be an acceleration and it looks like v of 5 when I plug that in I get 56 and v of 2 is 3 over 3 so I get uh, 50 50 uh, 53 over 3 Oops, I just made a mistake, I realized. This is supposed to be... This is supposed to be a 5. So I get 51. 51 divided by 3, which is 17. So that'll be 17 meters per second squared. But I could also do... I could also find the average acceleration on that interval by computing the average value of acceleration. So that's also 1 over 5 minus 2, the integral from 2 to 5 of our acceleration function, which is 6t minus 4. And this ends up being, we'll put this into our calculator too while we're at it here, this ends up being 6x minus 4 and we'll go to the quit screen and we'll evaluate this this time I think I could just probably put in 6x minus 4 it's easier evaluate, evaluate with respect to x on the interval 2 to 5 and you see I get 51 so I got my 1 third times 51 which is 26 meters per second so we've got now two ways two ways to calculate these things. And of course, one thing to notice is that the way you calculate it will obviously depend on the information you get. So if I have only the position function, then you might want to calculate average velocity using this rate of change formula up here. You could, of course, take its derivative, which is velocity, and then find the average value of velocity. That, could, that as well uh, will work. Um, so now you the point is now you just have choices and obviously use make the best choice depending on the information you get. But the other thing is that this is this is going to um, be the the backbone to the the proof of the fundamental theorem, or at least the way I'm going to show you the proof of the fundamental theorem.